Thanks for that uh, nice introduction. Uh, yeah, so I'll be talking about you know how AI uh, is being used in financial services, especially with the Gen AI. Uh, my name is Arunan Patnaik. I'm a technical specialist at Microsoft. There is my personal website if you want to uh, get hold of me later. Uh, to for today's presentation, um, there is there will be a feedback form that I will share at the. Uh, end and you know this is what it looks like uh the purpose of the feedback form is for, for me to get more idea about what you would like me to speak about how today's session was and um you know for you filling out there is a free gift that you get which is my uh white paper on ai compliance made easy for decision makers uh, there will be also a question there that do you want me to follow up for a, a, a call to do a workshop or anything deep dive into whatever I talk about today. So I'll be doing this later. Uh, so. Hey, before I forget, Arun, make mm -hmm. sure since that's new information, you send me those details so I can include them in the post event email that's automatically generated by Zoom tomorrow. Just send them the email to me today, and then okay. and then I will make sure it's automatically included. Uh, in people, in case people didn't have a chance to write it down. Yeah, I, I'll share this deck with you, uh, so that includes this information. Okay. okay. So, uh, what is an inflection point? An inflection point is when a fundamental change happens in technology landscape that changes the way you do business and it, it pretty much forces you to do it. If you don't, uh, you, you are going to uh, lose business and you probably cannot survive, right? And over the year, there have been many uh, inflection points, right? The first, it was personal computing that kind of change the way people do processing. People kind of started saying that, hey, if you're not doing things in computer, you just cannot survive, right? Then came the internet. You know, it, then again, people started saying that, hey, if you are not online, you can't really sustain yourself. Then came mobile. It's like you have to be mobile, otherwise you're not uh, getting your customers. Then it's cloud. Uh, if you are not putting your stuff on cloud, you cannot in innovate fast enough, you cannot deliver fast enough, then again, you are going to lose uh, in the competition. Today, it's all about AI. Now, AI is nothing new. AI has been around for a while, but what's different today is that AI is now ready for prime time. It's ready to be integrated into uh, business processes, right? So that's the new inflection point we have today. But AI is different. Uh, AI can understand, it can reason, it can learn. So AI is a computer program that imitates human intelligence. This inflection point you know, creates a perceived value and you know, creates a gap between what people are uh, getting to what they expect. And that's common for any inflection point. Right, uh, people today kind of expect that you know everything to be AI enabled. Uh, people just expect things to, to be more automated because it's already there, and uh, you know they see it with other customers. And if any uh, you know company is not using it, people kind of start to feel like they are not getting the true value out of that company. That's primarily because AI has now reached a maturity level that financial services now need to think about, you know, not AI as a concept, but think about AI as an offering that is integrated into the products and services that they offer, right? Because AI is creating new business model, it's creating a new consumer behavior, Right? There is new types of innovation that is happening and it creates a, a new employee engagement that the employees now work with AI. Okay. And of course, Microsoft is no um, new to AI. There, there are you know, eight global research centers, over thousands of uh, researchers with thousands of you know, research published and 
over 20,000 patent and you know Microsoft is first to receive human parity on most of the AI services. So the human parity is when an AI service is tested to be at the same level as human intelligence. This is kind of the entire stack of the Microsoft portfolio in brief. Right at the top, you have your SaaS applications, which is Microsoft 365, your Office application, Dynamic 365, your BizApp applications, and Partner Solutions. So these are SaaS applications that have AI embedded in them. So you can, uh, you know, as you use, you are using AI under the hood, you know, without even knowing it. If you need a level of customization, that's where you have this low code platform, you know, starting with Power BI for reporting, Power App and Power Automate for automation. And then you have, you know, this uh, virtual agent or Copilot Studio that I will talk about later uh, to do customization of your AI using low code, no code platform. And then you have this scenario-based AI services like AI search, document intelligence, video indexer, right? So these are pre-trained models which are designed to uh, solve specific tasks like image recognition or you know uh, getting text out of a document. And some of these they can be customized to recognize your data. So leading to that is the customizable model where you know, any of these pretend model like, you know, vision or video intelligence, they can be customized using your data. So it starts to recognize your data on top of whatever public data it's trained in. Now the OpenAI, which is the Gen AI offering in Azure is part of that customizable AI model. So you get Azure OpenAI, which is trained on large amount of data uh, and it allows you to fine tune using your own data so that you can customize uh, that AI to start to recognize your business use case and your data. And if you want to build from scratch, then there is the Azure machine learning platform where you write your own code, you provide your data to start building your model from scratch. So the Gen AI option with uh, OpenAI, there are uh, like three flavors of it. Right, starting from you know, uh, kind of use it as is, like Microsoft Copilot. So there are uh, Copilot for everything. I'll talk about the full uh, offering of Copilot later. But something like Microsoft Copilot is, you know, you use uh, how it is out of the box. That is very little option to customize. There is way to add more data through connector, but there is not much change that you can do to it. So that you know, so you just use it as is. That's what Microsoft Copilot is. If you want to customize and add those connectors to add additional data that it will start recognizing, you can start doing that with Microsoft Copilot Studio. If you want to the pro code version where you really want to customize, you know, uh, inner libraries of how exactly it makes the call, what it calls, and how, uh, you know, so you do everything. When you do everything in code, you have a lot more control. And that's where you can use Azure AI Studio to uh, customize your AI model in a pro code way. Okay. And this is that full stack of, you know, Copilot offering from Microsoft. Uh, by now, there is virtually Copilot for just about every service that uh, Microsoft offers. Uh, as I mentioned, when you have Copilot, the options for customizing it varies from low code to pro code. Right, so you have your M365 Copilot, your Sales Copilot under Biz Apps. You can customize that using the low code platform with Copilot Studio or Pro Code with Azure AI Studio, and all of those uh, work on top of the security and governance that's built in. Uh, plus, with uh, you know AI Studio, you have a responsible AI dashboard that I'll talk about later, and you have you know thousands of connectors and all the other Azure AI service that you can integrate. Now, I do uh, this talk as a professional speaker and technical specialist at Microsoft. You know, I talk to a lot of financial services about Copilot. One of the main interest is the security Copilot. Right? because security is a big concern within financial services. 
And when I talk about a security co-pilot or any co-pilot for that matter, one of the questions that comes up is, why should I get a co-pilot for this and co-pilot for that? Uh, you know, why don't I just use an LLM or just come up with a prompt for ChatGPT to do it? Now, the answer to that is context aware, right? When you use a copilot like security copilot, it you know it keeps you what uh, Azure OpenAI models have, like you have your OpenAI model plus the Microsoft security that you get with Azure. You have your hyperscale AI infrastructure. You get all that. On top of that, how a copilot for a specific use case like security copilot is different is that on top of that, you get cybersecurity trained model, you get the threat intelligence, you get cybersecurity skills based prompt books that's embedded into the copilot. So it understands security scenarios. You can just talk to it like, well, I got this uh, alert. What could this be about? Instead of having to give it a bunch of data and come up with a complex prompt to um, you know, get a reasonable explanation of that. Right? So with Azure OpenAI, the main capabilities are first of all content generation which is most popular people are you know creating blogs uh, using open ai email you know with m365 copilot you know creating decks is one of the common use case and then there is also summarization uh, you know e want to create a document but also to uh, read a document and get the fine prints out of the document. And code generation, like the GitHub Copilot is best example of that. Uh, but you know, OpenAI models can generate uh, programming code and also translate a code like the Java to C sharp or something like that. Plus semantic search, because uh, these models, they understand the meaning. You can embed these models to do search where you are not just searching for keywords, you are searching for words that have semantic meaning. Okay. Now, when you choose uh, you know, Gen AI model, that is kind of a uh, belief that Gen AI is now the best form of AI. So let's use Gen AI for everything. While Gen AI is you know, the most powerful model we have today under OpenAI, it's still not the best for every use case. Typically, if you have numerical use case, like you're predicting stock price, right? You're building a financial risk model where you're coming up with, you know, a, a, a numerical score for how risky something is, right? For those type of models, the traditional regression classification clustering models are still better than Gen AI. What you want to use Gen AI for is what I just mentioned, the, uh, you know, content generation, summarization, translation, any language type of uh, use case, because after all, uh, the Gen AI models are language models. So for those types of use case uh, is where uh, Gen AI uh, models are useful. And now it's multimodal, so you could use images and videos, but still don't use it for numbers, don't use it for you know, uh, predicting stock price or anything like that. Okay. Now, uh, I talked about the inflexor point where, you know, customers expect this uh, to be embedded into the business process. Now, when you think about AI adoption, there are three phases to it. The horizon one is where you start using AI internally and you have your internal champions who are using it uh, to kind of test that it works and get uh, see what value it generates and see if if it makes sense uh, to deploy in a large scale whether you are going to get the return on investment or not right so that's a horizon one where you are kind of piloting it that's where people were starting uh, last year today most customers are at horizon two or horizon three where horizon two means you are now offering uh, that co-pilot that you built to 
your uh, clients, right? And in Horizon 3, it's now embedded into your public facing applications and you're building new products uh, that are more AI enabled that, you know, is a kind of offering that you just never had before. And of course, when you talk about AI, uh, you just cannot ignore security. Uh, these wordings are all over Microsoft public documentation. Microsoft Cloud runs on, on trust. Your data is your data. Microsoft will never use your data that you use to fine tune your model uh, for uh, retraining the model or that data is not accessible to any other customer or anyone else, uh, your model and your data is protected within your tenant with your firewall. Uh, this is that responsible AI dashboard that I was talking about. If you are building AI using the Azure AI Studio, you can use the responsible AI dashboard to measure your uh, AI model against uh, parameters like groundedness, relevance, fluency, and coherence. Okay. So coming to financial services, what are the use cases? Uh, there are many use cases that I'll talk about later, but it all kind of comes down to that internal co-pilot that I talked about. Now, Microsoft has lots of co-pilots for different applications, and Microsoft offers uh, the LLM models under the Azure OpenAI service. When the best use case of using those model is to build an internal copilot where you fine tune that model using your data to do something business use case specific right so that's the kind of the most common use case that you know if in a different business scenario it might be different but really that's how you get the most value out of the model because you customize it to your scenario, your use case, so it kind of becomes more productive in um, doing the things that you do most of the time. In banking, some of the use cases are supporting the customer uh, service agent, you know, uh, contact center modernization is one of the big topic where you, you get the call transcripts, you analyze it and find out what happened and come up with accents in a, in a, in a more automated way. Fraud detection is, of course, uh, you know, very important in financial services. For high net worth uh, individual uh, customers or, you know, investment banking, the advisors being able to generate AI enabled uh, pitch deck or uh, you know customer suggestions those are one of the top use cases in investment banking uh, all of this is generally powered by what you call know your product this is where you're connecting your product knowledge to the AI model to answer questions about you know what your product does and accessibility is another top use case where you are able to translate things or maybe read aloud something Okay. Uh, for a customer onboarding uh, case for a retail bank, uh, you know, starting from the prospect planning, looking at whatever data you have about customer to find the right uh, marketing material to kind of get them, you know, into uh, creating an account for you. From that point to onboarding, so as they onboard, uh, the AI is kind of assisting them saying, hey, if you are doing this, think about this. So that kind of gives uh, customers a feel that, you know, it, it's even though it's not a person sitting next to it, it's AI, it still gives them that personalized service that customers are now used to. And, you know, the, the seamless uh, interaction between uh, AI to customers, so, uh, creating trigger point of ads customers on board, when to schedule a meeting with an advisor or someone at the bank, uh, that uh, you know operation becomes seamless and that's a more value add. Similarly for uh, investment banking for our high net worth customers, you know, starting from how to identify when somebody might be ready for more investment, to onboarding them and creating a pitch deck to offer them the right service at the right time. Uh, that's uh, the top use case in you know, investment banking. 
Now, coming to insurance, again, the same thing with uh, contact center and call center modernization. That's kind of common in every industry now, uh, plus accessibility. Uh, but in insurance, one of the complex tasks is the claims processing, where you need to read a lot of documents and validate that they are true and they are compliant with your policy. Uh, fraud detection is again there, but it's slightly different where you are detecting more of an insurance fraud, right? Uh, and similar to you know empowering advisors, you are your em empowering agents to kind of take the right action at the right time in the fastest possible way. Uh, similar uh, customer journey about uh, you know customer onboarding exists in uh, insurance as it does in banking. Uh, in uh, under that claims processing. There is uh, two a big part of it, right? There is the actuarial where you are kind of validating uh, what happened in the claim. Is all the data correct or not, right? That and using that to kind of assess, uh, you know, what should be uh, the value for this claim, right? So that actuarial part of it is, you know, with AI, you can detect those words out of a document and pre-generate uh, those reports that you need to. When it comes to underwriting, uh, underwriting can you know, look at that and scan against uh, your policies to say which um, you know which ones are approved or which ones are questionable, and it can generate automated messages back to the agent about uh, whether it should be approved or not that you know speeds up and simplifies process and finally the uh, actual claim handling you know once the actuarial and underwriting is done to uh, schedule that customer call and informing customer about uh, at what stage the claim is uh, all that uh, can be automated through ai now coming to capital market uh, again the client engagement uh, and accessibility is still um, the same use case here, but uh, capital markets rely a lot on market research, looking at vast amount of data like Bloomberg, uh, you know, Reddit, uh, pretty much the entire internet is the, you know, database for capital market to look at different signal. I had a customer who was looking at a Reddit customer uh, or just Reddit post to kind of get a signal that is this a new trend uh, by a retail investor uh, that they should act on. Right? And pitch book generation, just like investment banking, uh, pitch book generation is a big use case. And of course, uh, know your product, uh, uh, integrating your product and knowledge into the AI to answer questions about your product is again the use case here. Um, similar uh, to banking, the customer journey here kind of follows from the customer acquisition to uh, a financial advisor giving uh, it a financial plan, creating that plan in an automated way and giving the right finance advice the right way and doing it all in a compliant manner, all of this can be AI enabled, okay? Some uh, capital market customers who have a wholesaling, like, you know, they have a financial product, but they allow uh, multiple uh, retail, uh, you know, or independent financial advisors to offer their financial product as a service uh, to create that messaging uh, to those uh, advisors to know about your financial product at the right time uh, so that they can advise to their customers, which increases uh, sale for you. Uh, that's a, a new AI use case in capital market. And of course, uh, marketing and compliance and the research is uh, always there, like I talked about. Particularly within trading, the pre-trade research, which is similar to market research, right, uh, is a use case. The actual trading, uh, you know, the stock price, uh, you know, the, the pricing part of it is not so much that you want to use LLM for, but to create signals based on your market research about what can be a trigger 
uh, that's where uh, you know that's a big uh, gen ai use case in trading and um, you know coming to clearing and settlement and uh, custody fund services uh, again these are like uh, compliance uh, type of services where you want to generate uh, those clearing documents you want to process existing document to uh, get the data that you need uh, all that again uh, can be AI enabled okay so that's pretty much the end of my talk and here is that feedback form that I was talking about you can you know use the browser to go to talk.ac for own in the use the code finoct which is uh, the code for uh, the webinar today and you know there are few simple questions that you want to answer uh, and once you do um, you will get it's automated you will get that ai compliance for decision makers white paper uh, to you in mail and there is a question there if you want a follow-up consultation on angel beat there is a way to schedule a custom gen ai workshop so you can do that as well and just mention this talk and mention my name uh, and we can schedule a one-on-one -on -one session to deep dive into your use case